Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala khatamil anbiya'i wal mursalin Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um alhamdulillah we are on another day, another Friday, um, another blessed day that all of us we just need to uh, insyaallah um spend the time if, if you have not one of the things that Fridays that you should do a lot is of course to send blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? So you should do it a lot. Um, don't forget later, well, I know it's football, 8 o'clock, but Maghrib is about 9, 9.25, isn't it true? So from 8.25 to 9.25, do spend some time doing your um, dua, inshallah, right? It's the best time to make dua, right? So these are the two things now. If you have, you have not done your, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, the uh, Al-Kaf, right? You should do Al-Kaf, inshallah. So... Um, yeah, it's, Friday is always a day, um, it has been in the Hadith, it's a day of our Eid, every Friday is a day of celebration. So, you know, we do need to, alhamdulillah, um, thank Allah, right, that we are uh, on a Friday, on a blessed day. Now, the, the topic for today is about the rise of Allah, right? The rise of Allah is, it, as a human being, we, we, we are always, um, we always want something from Allah, isn't it true? We want this, we want that, we want a good education, we want good health, we want to be in Jannah, we, we want everything, right? And we forgot that the one who is going to give us also has his rights, right? So we cannot just take, 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 take from this, take from that, and all this um, nice house, right? A nice garden, uh, nice food. And then, and good health, alhamdulillah, Islam, of course, are right? very important that Allah gave us Islam. And we, we, we are still alive, breathing to, to that, uh, that we are a, able to, uh, inshallah, make full use of our, of our short time in this life to, in order to prepare for the Diyar judgment. So these are amazing gifts that Allah has given us. But we should also understand what is Allah's right. Right, Allah's given it. Allah, we're gonna go to some verses of the Quran, right? That Allah gave us everything, but Allah did not expect to be paid, right? Where else in this world? I'm talking about worldly things, right? In your school, um, in your work, when you go anywhere in London, right, or where you live, um, where do you find things that are given for free, um, without being paid, right? Allah gave us eyes, right, ears, the ability to talk, alhamdulillah, the ability to breathe, and all this, inshallah, is as a purpose, right, inshallah, for all of us to try and prepare to face Allah on the day of judgment, right, and this, this, these are the means that Allah has given us for, to seek Allah's guidance, and this is, this must be the first priority that we have, um, and, and it's for free, right? Nobody, Allah did not ask us to pay in terms of money, right? Where in this world do you find something given to you for free, right? No, we can't find anything, right? You go, you want to buy stuff, you want to go to the shopping center, you click online, you want, you see something you like online, you everything you need to, you need to pay, right? So, but Allah gave you everything for free without asking us anything else, but, right? He, of course, he has a right over us, and we need to understand this right, right? And we need to discuss in detail, inshallah, so that we are able to understand the rights of Allah. If we do not understand the rights of Allah, which I know, right? And we're going to discuss about it. Uh, a lot, a big, a chunk percentage of Muslims, in, especially in Muslim countries, completely do not understand what is Allah's rights. And this is something that you can see them going to the graves to worship the, the graves, um, going to or uh, having wearing these tawis to protect themselves. Um, they, 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 they do many things, right? Um, well, according to them, they need this to protect themselves. Right? They, they, they have their own, even their own shuyukhs, right? So called shuyukhs, right? Uh, in order to ask for help. And these are the things that we, we do need to really understand that the basic right of Allah must be completely upheld, inshallah, right? So first of all, I'd like to highlight to you, right, about the hadith narrated by Bukhari Muslim, right? And Mu'adh ibn 
Jabalin qala qala an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam Mu'ad bin Jabal reported the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yep ya Mu'ad atadri ma haqqullahi 'ala al-'ibad right so our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as Mu'ad bin Jabal was, was amazing companions rather on hand and who and he asked oh Mu'ad do you know what is the right of Allah upon his servants do you know what the right of Allah is upon his servants. Qala Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. Yeah. This is the standard answer given by the sahaba, right? Because they do not want to make any mistakes, right? And they all say, right? Um Allah and his messenger know best. Okay? Qala an an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'a. Right? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered to worship him alone and to associate none in worship with him. Atadri ma haqquhum alayh And uh, do you know what is their right upon him? So that means if we were to worship Allah only, right, without associating any partners, we also have a right against Allah. Because it's, well, I wouldn't put the that way that well you do this we give you this you'll get something and and technically it's like this but when we were if we were to completely worship allah and associate none at all with allah right um there's a muhammad as muhammad so if we worship allah alone and we associate none with him right um, what is our right against Allah? Right? I say it again, same answer, right? They, all, they, they always say, right? Allah and His Messenger know best, right? Qala Allahu Rasulullah A'lam, that is what they say, yeah? And Qala An La Tu'adhibahum, right? If we were to worship only Allah without performing any shirk, right? Our rights against Allah as his servants that he will not punish us. And this is quite important hadith, right, that we, we do understand. This is quite, um, it, it sounds so simple, right? Well, worship Allah only. And it isn't, isn't this what we say in our Al-Fatiha, isn't it true? Iya na'budu wa iya nasta'in. Only to you we worship and only to you we seek help. Sadly, right, sadly. A lot of people say this, but they don't understand. They do not understand anything at all what they recite. Yes, of course, right? Arabic may not be our first language, but Subhanallah, this is what we say to Allah every day, right? Not less than seventeen times a day we say to Allah. It's interesting, our Al Fatiha, right? And we understood in in, in the long hadith, right? When we say Alhamdulillah al Alamin, right? What is Allah's response? Anybody? In a long hadith, right? Allah said, okay, in the, in the translation, um, I divided the, the, the salah into two parts. The first part is for me. The second part is for my servants. When my servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, what is my response? What, what is the response, brothers? Anybody? You know best to start. <laughs> well... I did say this a few times in Nitro, right? In our al fatiha this is this is how very important for me and for you to understand this because when we say something, Allah is always responding to us. When we say Alhamdulillah, which means all praise and thanks go to Allah, the the, the Rob of the Alameen, Allah will respond back, My servant is praising me. When we say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, right? Allah will respond back, My servant is glorifying me. When we say Maliki Yamiddin, which means the, the owner of the Day of Judgment, Allah will respond with, my servant is exalting me. And when we say, wa which means only to you we worship and only to you we seek help, what is Allah's response? And everybody knows? This is between me and my servant, and my servant shall have what he asked for. And when we say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Wadal Mandubi Alim Waladalin, which means 
Guide us to the straight way, the way of home of those whom you have bestowed your favors, not the way that has that has earned your anger, not, not the way whom you have led astray. Allah again will respond with the same response. This is between me and my servant, and my servant shall have what he asked for. And this is quite significant, brothers, because it is a conversation between you and Allah. It's not something that you say and nobody responding. It is direct conversation. So that, that's why the prayer itself, it is how what you say to Allah and what he will respond, right? And the fact that all of us, well, those who claim to, those who claim to have prayed five times a day would say this at least 17 times a day. And then why do you go to the grave and worship the grave? Why do you seek help from the fortune tellers? Or in terms of to, to know the future. Why do you wear these tawis to protect yourself? Why do you put these verses in the Quran in order to protect your house? And this is quite this is not uncommon. So this is not 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 this is this is very common in many cultures and we all of us we do need to really realize this, right? It seems because, remember just now about the hadith, right? The rights of Allah is very straightforward. That, that we worship only Allah and we associate none as a partner with Allah. Very straightforward. And yet, when I hear and I saw things myself, it is, it is unbelievable people are doing this, right? Um, I knew for, for a fact that my neighbor... Um, my, not my neighbor, my far neighbor, who's a Bangladesh, said in Bangladesh, there's ev in every village, there are three shrines. The shrines that people paid for so that they can make dua, not to Allah directly, but through the shrines. I myself went to Jordan, I went to Palestine, that were the shrines of the prophets, and I saw myself in front of my own eyes. People were making dua facing these, uh, the shrines. And I even saw people dropping coins as a form of good luck. Um, when I'm sure those of you who have been to Mecca, Medina, you will see, right, at in front of the Prophet's grave, instead of facing the Qibla, making dua to Allah, they make dua, turning to the Prophet's grave and make dua then. The Shia is very common doing this. The Sufi is, not, is no, no better. And these are the things in which you are wondering, right, that where is this knowledge about Tawheed? That's so Allah's right has been infringed on many levels. Right? And this is something in which we do need to understand, brothers, right? It's very straightforward, Allah's right, because as I said just now, Allah's given us many things, right? Um, he didn't even ask for any, any, any reward from us, right? Eyes, the ears, mouth to speak, everything, the beautiful face, we have our feet to walk, the hands to use, we can work, alhamdulillah, and all these, the brains to think, right? And yet, yet many people are not grateful to Allah, right? By understanding this Allah's rights and worshipping Him only. And a lot of people are doing shirik completely, right? So let us, let us discuss now, why is it difficult to, un why is it difficult for people to understand about Tawheed, about worshipping Allah only, and why people committing so much shirik. Anybody? Any answers? Brothers? Um, is the shaitan's plan? <laughs> Who? Shaitan? Yeah. Yusuf, right? Yeah, Yusuf, assalamu alaikum. I just said... Um, yeah, your, I just said, your, your, your culture is any true, right? Nigerians. Same thing as my culture is the same. I'm not, I'm not, not, not just your culture, right? I knew, right? Um, yes, of course. First of all, Shaitan, right? Shaitan, Shaitan himself, right? Has made a promise to Allah that he would mislead many of us. And he said, right? Um, in one of the verses of the Quran in the meaning that um, he will mislead many people it, 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 along his path. Right? And Allah said very clearly, right? The shaitan, shaitan cannot control us unless we are the one who followed him. And this is something that we do need to understand this, right? Um, that this, and, and shirk, as you know, is, is the biggest prize ever of shaitan. Because once a person commits shirk, what happened? 
and die in that state? It is. Can Allah forgive them? No, right? So we 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 have many verses in the Quran. So let's pick one verse. For example, in Surah number four, in I think verse number one one six, right? Four one one six. In very in very clear language, right? Allah informed us about those who commit shirk. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha wa man yushrik billahi faqad dalla dalalan ba'ida Verily Allah do not forgive setting up partners in worship with him but he forgives those whom he wills sins other than that and whoever sets up partners in worship with Allah has indeed straight far away right so, if a person is committing shirk and died in that state, subhanAllah, finished, right? He couldn't even smell paradise. And the smell of paradise can be smelled very, very far away. So, we have to be very careful with this. Um, shirk can, can also exist in many different levels, as you know, right? So, uh, a simple example, and let, let's put, let, let's, um, i give you an example that I experienced, right? Um, and you may you may be surprised because it's so common people do this. So I'm a human rights and immigration lawyer, right? And I help people to, alhamdulillah, to um, to to gain some status in the UK, right? A lot of times, um, alhamdulillah, I was able to help them, and they said, "Oh, thank you, you have helped many people, and because of you." I, because of you, I'm able to live in this country. I say, I always say, whether they are Muslims or not, right? Thank God, right? Thank Allah, right? That we, that you are able to do this. And it's very important that I myself do not think that it is me and my ability to help them. It is me who, is, who, who allowed the application to be successful. And this is very, very important to understand this, right? If you are a teacher, right, you are teaching others, right? And somehow or other, a lot of your students pass and they think, oh, thank you, teacher, because of you, we pass the exams. Don't be too happy with what they say because they are elevating to the level of Allah, isn't it true? In the sense that it is not, yes, you are a means of helping them to pass the exam. But the, the one who actually made them pass the exam is Allah. Right? If you're a doctor, a person came, would come to you and say, oh, I've been to so many doctors and yet I was not able to have my illness removed. But when I come to you, everything is okay. Because of you, I'm able to lead a normal life. And this phrase, you have to be very uneasy when you hear about this. If you are very comfortable with this, and you are smiling very broadly, something must be wrong with your Tawheed. We have to acknowledge whatever happens to anybody, everything comes from Allah. And the praise and thanks must go to Allah first. And this is about Tawheed. And this, this is about the rights of Allah. If we take the um, gratitude first without um, acknowledging Allah's rights that make things happen, then we have committed a form of shirk. Isn't it true? Anybody disagree? Brothers? Any questions? Now, this is, this is quite important because this is, because this is a very common occurrence, right? So for me personally, when, when people praise me or thank me regarding my work, um, I always say, thank God, right? Or whenever I'm able to uh, do something, um, maybe not complete, I say, thank God I was able to finish this. I told my clients, right? Thank God we, we uh, finished the application. Thank God. It is always, everything is, for me personally, I would praise and show my gratitude to Allah first. And my conversation, whether I'm addressing a Muslim or non-Muslim, must be the same. Brothers, how can you 
in front of Muslim friends, yeah, alhamdulillah. And, and in front of your non-Muslim friends, you are taking the praise and taking the, you know, taking the um, the gratitude that Allah, uh, that, that they, they, are, they are showing to you without telling them it is Allah, or well, can say them, the non-Muslim, it is God who make things happen. And this is something that we do need to have this ability to understand the rights of Allah. Everything that happens, happens by the will of Allah. Isn't it true? Nothing can happen if Allah does not wish it to happen. Right? So, and this is important that we understand this. Right? That we understand that um, the rights of Allah, everything, right? We must acknowledge that everything happens with His will. And we, therefore, we only worship Him. We only show our gratitude to Him. And at the same time, right, we show our gratitude to Allah, right, by obeying everything that He has ordered us to do or commanded us to do. And we try to refrain ourselves from doing things that, that, that He has forbidden us to do without any questions, without any arguments. Because some people are always asking, why is Allah making these things in the Quran? Why is woman getting less money in the inheritance? Why is this? this? So, so a lot of questions are being asked um, because at the end of the day, a lot of people are quite arrogant in the sense that they are always having these questions to ask um, without understanding that Allah creates us. He has the right to do whatever things that, that he, he wish to do in terms of the um, hukum or the... Um, the law uh, behind uh, like the, in the Quran and all the Sharia Allah and all this, right? It's not up to you and I to question Allah because that, what happened to Iblis? Iblis questioned Allah, didn't he, right? Well, I wouldn't say, well, he didn't, he didn't actually question, he just disobeyed directly, right? When Allah asked him to bow down to um, Adam alayhi salam, he didn't understand. He didn't understand at all about the fact that it was Allah who ordered everybody, not just him alone, everybody to bow down to um, Adam alayhi salam, right? And it happened in paradise. And how, what, a, what a place to disobey Allah, right? And the fact that he did disobey Allah and he did not even have any single guilt or feeling very... Uh, he didn't even repent to Allah and he even tried to argue his way out why he did not do that itself. What is the punishment of Iblis and Shaitan? Continued um, curse by Allah and the angels. Right? So this is something in, the, in which we need to understand this fundamental aspect of Allah's rights in order for all of us to, inshallah, to be, to be truly right, grateful to Allah and to acknowledge whatever things happen, it is all from with the will of Allah, right? Yes, alhamdulillah, we have the, some of us have the ability to, to be a means of making things happen, right? A teacher it can able to teach the children, right? A doctor can, inshallah, with Allah's will again, right? Is able to help the people to, to make things better in terms of their health, right? An architect is able to... Um, design some buildings, right? A builder is able to build a house, but everything happens with Allah's will and Allah's help. And this is this is very fundamental. If we don't understand this, something must be wrong with our aqidah, something must be wrong with how we we look at things and which we must change immediately. Okay? So we, the questions just now that was asked before, why um, why were people still confused about the simple message of Tawheed, that means worshipping only Allah? The first answer was Shaitan. What are the things that we can think of? Why are people still do not understand, or some people do not understand about Tawheed and that they should worship Allah alone? Any other reasons? Um, Salam alaikum. Yeah, Salam alaikum. On because um, I've listened to quite a few of um, your talk on this um, Tawheed and Shrik and it's very um, disturbing because a lot of people ignorantly, like for example in Nigeria and in Africa at large, yes. 
we will do it without even knowing. And that's the scary part that, you know, most of it is ignorantly that they think what they're doing is permissible, which, yeah. you know, and it's all like be that. So I would say that's also like the ignorant side as well and the cultural side. Yes. So, so, so you are making a few points there, right? One of them, uh, so we could talk about shaitan. Second is a culture, right? Some cultural practice are making people um, committing shirk, right? And this is something that we, we, we must completely um, ignore. There's nothing wrong with culture as long as it's in conformity to what Islam has taught us. Right, you can wear a dress, can wear your clothing, whatever things you wear, right? But as long as it's within the parameters of uh, what Allah has informed us in the Quran and through authentic hadith, right? But when when the culture itself, right? For example, Afghanistan, right? I know your as part of your culture, you will, in 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 terms of your wedding, you will go underneath the Quran. Isn't it true? Um, what's his name? Um, Adil. If yes, you are still sir. around, mm-hmm. right? As part of the culture of husband and wife in the marriage, you will go and need the Quran for what? To get protection, to bless this this wedding, to bless the couple, and all this, right? And this is this is a cultural practice is completely not in conformity with the fundamental. Um, issues about Allah, right? Who is the one who will protect us? Allah. Didn't we say in our Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. We praise Allah. We thank Allah. Who is Allah? Rabbil Alamin. He is the um, the one who provides, the creates, the one who protects, the one who guides, the one who gives us eyes to see. He's our Rabb. And we thank Allah, right? And the fact that you're using another means to protect you in terms of the Quran itself, isn't that a form of shirk? And this is cultural practices. Well, in my culture, well, we were used, we used, not we, as in the previous generations, earlier generations of Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia were all Hindus. So it was just that when they, um, they started to become Muslims, right? Um, it, it's just that some of the cultural practices were still stuck, the Hindu culture. So you have ceremonies that, for example, they would um, feed each other food to, as a form of good luck. They would step on something in order to be a to form of good luck. They would do things, right? Um, and this is quite important for us to really actually address this, right? Um, in order for us not to fall into the trap of shirik. And this is how, for example, when I remember 2006 or 2016, I can't remember, when the one of the volcanoes erupted in Indonesia, the, the, the king himself, one of the kings of the, of the province, he ordered the animal to be slaughtered and to be thrown into the volcanic volcano in order to appease the, the lords of the, uh, well, to appease the guardians of the mountains, something like that, right? Every first of Muharram, they also have this ceremony to uh, where they put food, they, they will put food in the sea in order to give food to the guardians of the sea. So all this extra shirik is, is not uncommon. It is common, but the fact is that, and it's still being continued to be carried out today. Right, so so it's, it's not it's not just in Nigeria, um, you so, but in many parts of the world it is, and this is so sad because right, there is Allah who's always watching over us, right? He is protecting us, He is guiding us, He's giving us Islam, He gives giving us us time to prepare to face Him. Yet people are thanking other than Allah by doing all these offerings, completely shirk. And, and you have to understand that that means the rights of Allah has been infringed. Obviously, the punishment of Allah is very severe for these people if they do not repent. Okay? So, yes, yeah, so shaitan, culture, and of course, seeking knowledge, right? That's why we seek knowledge. We come 
well, I hate to say this, you, we, the, the malls are still closed. Um, we can't meet in the malls, but this is the next best thing to meet up online, right? You don't need to leave your house. You just need to switch on the computer and to join me, inshallah, and maybe maybe in other lessons, it's up to you or, or, or other groups, right? But this is so we need to continuously to seek knowledge because without knowledge, you wouldn't know what is right, what is wrong, and this is and and we know that the um, seeking of knowledge is is not a sunnah, it's obligatory, right? And because we remind each other, yeah, about the truth, that is why Prophet Muhammad, uh, the uh, Imam Imam Shafi'i, right, rahimullah, said that if Surah al wal Asr was the only one that was to be revealed. It will be sufficient for us. Wal Asri inna al insan al fi khusus. By time man is at a loss. Illa ladina amanu except those who believe wa amilu salihat and do good righteous deeds. Wa tawasau bil haq and remind one another about the truth which we are doing now. Wa tawasau bil sabr and remind one another about one another about patience. So this is something in which it is obligatory for us to to attend classes, to seek knowledge, then we know what to do and what not to do, right? So on the day of judgment, if any one of us were to say, oh Allah, I didn't know I'm, I didn't know I'm not supposed to wear taweez to protect me. Oh Allah, I didn't know, I didn't know that I'm not supposed to do this. I didn't know I'm not supposed to do this. Is it acceptable on their judgment that we plead that ignorance that we do not know? Brothers? Yes or no? You can't defend yourself that you do not know about things. Because everything has been revealed in the Quran. That's why we have always been reminding each other. Quran, spend time. We call it tadabur. Ponder over it. We need to read properly, know the meaning. Don't just come to the Quran and just uh, what call it, finish the Quran within seven days, within 14 days. And, we, and, and after the Quran was finished, you don't even have a single improvement in yourself. And it's something in which we, we need to really understand because the quran is guidance from allah guidance from allah means guiding us to to be better in our deen inshallah right um other things that why people are still confused between shirk and between tawheed and shirk and all this it is of course guidance is from allah right it is not up to you and i to force somebody to understand do not wear taweez do not do this, do that. I, I know some of my students, they, um, they, they have issues with their family members where, you know what's Tawi? Tawi is something you wear on the neck, isn't it true? That you are, uh, some people are doing it to protect themselves, to, uh, they believe that this will protect them and all this, right? You and I, our job is just to remind, right? We are not there to uh, guide them or to, to, to make sure that they understand everything. Well, because everything is from Allah, right? So so this is where we, we do need to make this effort, of course, right? To enjoin good and forbid evil because Allah did say, well, takuminkum umatun yada'una ilal khair wa ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhauna anil munkar wa ula'ika humul muflihun. In surah number three, verse number 104. And let there be among you a group of people inviting to all that is good and joining what is right forbidding what is evil, and it is they who are the successful ones. So it, it is, if you want to be successful in Ms. Jannah, we remind each other about the truth, inshallah. Okay? But eventually, eventually, guidance is from Allah. Right? That is why we have this, um, well, difficult to believe scenario how the Pharaoh, who was the worst one, wait, I, I should put him as the worst, if not one of the worst human beings, ever to be created by Allah because he thought he was God himself, right? But subhanAllah, his wife, Asiya, yeah, wasn't she one of the best women in Islam, right? And this is how Allah guides somebody in the same household and Allah misguides another person, husband and wife. Well, that is why, uh, who else? Nuh alayhi salam, right? And Lut alayhi salam, the, both their wives, will be in hell fire. It's on the Quran in Surah At-Tahrim, right? Um, we also have Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? Who couldn't even guide, he, well, in the Quran, Allah put him as uh, Khalilullah, the intimate friend of Allah. Even he couldn't guide his, his father to Islam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, the beloved prophet, right? He couldn't even guide his uncle, right? 
Um, the most he can do, because the uncle died as a disbeliever, the most he could do is to, well, according to what he told the companions, I'm going to intercede for him. The companions was quite shocked, intercede? But he died as a disbeliever. Yes, intercession. That means he would be in the best part of hellfire, the most, the, the luxurious part of hellfire, which is to just to stand on a piece of stove and and it was heated up below and the brains would boil. This is the best part of hellfire. Right? And this is how Monarch Salah would intercede for the uncle. If that is the best part of hellfire, what if what is a little bit lower, a uh, worse part of than that? SubhanAllah. Right? Um, so we have all these factors that we need to analyze, right? Um, so uh, another factor is, of course, um, uh, when we talk about knowledge, it includes the Quran, right? That we, we fail to understand the Quran. Didn't Allah say in the Quran, al kitab la huda lil muttaqin. This is a book, there is no, no doubt about it, a guidance for those with taqwa. So this is something that we do need to, to strive to understand the Quran so that we can get guided. Nobody can get guided within reading the Quran that you don't understand what you read. It doesn't work like that. You need to spend time, right? Even though it, it, uh, for 15 minutes you only recite one verse, but if you understand this and you implement it, it's much better than 15 minutes you recite one whole page, right? So something you do need to really, we do need really to really do use this word called tadabur to, to recite properly, inshallah to understand and to ponder and most important to implement inshallah okay and um other factors including of course taqwa right taqwa is in surah number 8 verse number 20 29 allah did say in the meaning oh you who truly believe if you have uh, taqwa to allah allah will grant you furqan furqan is very important it's how allah grant this element to whom he wills that means you might be surprised why some people find, for example, lashing themselves at the back. It's good for you, the Shia, right, in the Ashura day. Whereas some people think that it's completely not Islamic, right? Some people find that we're dancing in a circle like the Sufis do. It's good, right? It's a form of worship. Whereas other people think this completely an act of innovation. Right, and so this is this is from Allah, right? That He He grants whom He wills, right? The ability to have this thing called furqan. Furqan means uh, a criterion to know what is right and what is wrong. It's very important that we understand exactly. And and I've said it so many times when Allah said, "Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum Islam dina." This day. I have perfected your religion for you. I have completed my favors upon you and I have chosen for you Islam as your way of life. Right? So literally, Islam was complete then. So if you want to do new things, right, which is in terms of acts of worship, right, and with no examples, no dalil, no evidence from the prophets or something in the Quran, then you would have committed an act of innovation. An act of innovation can even lead to shirk, as we discussed many times. So, when you have a lack of taqwa, God consciousness, then Allah will not grant you furqan. The more taqwa you have, the more conscious you have, then you will, inshallah, be, be granted furqan. Football later is at 8 o'clock. How many of us will go to the mosque? At about at about nine nine twenty-five, isn't it true? Right? Football England and Scotland, right? How many of us will actually turn turn off the TV and go to the mosque? And this is Friday, subhanAllah. The last hour is the best time to make dua. Right? It's time for us to know which is our priority. The hereafter or this up uh, I'm an avid football fan, of course, right? Um, but which is our priority? This um football and the score or priority is go to the mosque and pray maghrib right and making dua in the last hour of friday always remember right even if england if you will support england if england were to win you would not get a single penny is it true you still be the same what's it what's, it, what's the difference no difference in your life right but if you were to go to the mosque right and you were to make dua in the last hour of Friday, so much reward from Allah. And all this is very important that you 
we start to think about what is important for us in the hereafter. Not the short term, oh, happy enjoyment in this, in this life, but you need to know what is important for us in the hereafter. And this is something which we do need to be accountable for our deeds all the time, inshallah. Okay? Now, perhaps another reason why people are still making a lot of mistakes uh, uh, is in committing, like committing shirk is because the prayer is not your prayer is not good enough. What do I mean by this? Because didn't Allah promise us, and I said many times in, the, in my talks, in Surah number 29, verse number 45, inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. The prayer will prevent what? Fahsha or immorality and munkar. Any acts of disobedience. Shirk is, one, is the biggest acts of disobedience to Allah. If it doesn't make sense, right, brothers? Of course, as I said, Allah guides whomever He wills. But if we were to really be sincere when we say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us to straight away. Sirat al Ladina and Amta al Because it's not just the straight way. We were taught to qualify what is the straight way? The way of those whom you have bestowed your favors. Who are these people? Again, we discussed many times, Surah number 4, verse 69, the prophets, the siddiqun, the truthful ones, um, the martyrs, and number 4, the righteous ones. We do not want any other Muslims, not Muhammad, not Ahmad, not Ibrahim, that has completely no deen. We only want to follow the path of the righteous ones, or the path of the truthful ones, and all this. is in all in Surah number 4, verse 69. And it added on to it, right, we say, not the part that has on your anger. Not the part whom you have led astray. So, layers and layers of guidance you are trying to ask Allah sincerely. And don't tell me that with your sincere Allah do not answer your dua. So, if, if somehow or other we ask Allah every day, somehow or other we are still. Being misled, that means we are still committing shirk, we are still going to the grave to pray and all this. That means something must be wrong with the prayer, isn't it true? That Allah is not answering our dua. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, is it is our income halal? Because you know that when income is not halal, what happens? The dua is not answered, isn't it true? Worst thing, if you're dealing with alcohol, right? Then dua is not answered for 40 days, right? So we need to ask ourselves, but of course, all these realizations, all these we call al-muhasaba, or keep into account, is only upon Allah's guidance that you you want to know the truth. You want to know whether you have you are on the right track, because you want to ensure that Allah's rights would be fulfilled. And this is something that you are, only only you can do it. The rest of us are just here to remind each other. But you yourself, we have to really be very conscious of Allah, right? Because we are only given one chance, brothers. There's no other chance. Once the angel of death comes, what did Allah say? And I said many times in, in my classes, in Surah number 63, verse number 11, And no soul shall be granted respite when the appointed time comes, which is death. And Allah is well aware of what you do. Right? A friend of mine just passed away um, a few hours ago in Indonesia for COVID-19. Right? Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. Um, and what, because it was a quite fast death within one week. He passed away. So what, what makes us think that we are not we may not follow suit in terms of the death, right? Our death, uh, let's put it, the date of death has been determined in our mother's womb. We know date of birth, but date of death, all of us do not know. But it will come very soon, right? And before this comes, you and I, we do need to ensure that our everything is clean before we face Allah. The worst thing that we would ever do is that we do not fulfill Allah's right. And in the hadith that we discussed just now, right? If we were to fulfill Allah's right, which was, what? That we worship only Allah and we do not associate anything with Allah. 
then we then claim can claim our rights against Allah. If you do this, then we must not be punished. It's amazing, right? Do you know exactly this? Where where was it revealed? It was revealed, if I can remember, Isra Mi'raj. Right? It's in Isra Mi'raj, the journey from Muhammad uh, by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, from Mecca to Jerusalem and then ascension, Mi'raj, to the heaven above. Heavens means skies, yeah? Don't get mistaken. It's not paradise. Heavens, the skies. And eventually, above the seven heavens, we met Allah. Three things were revealed. Remember? Three things. The Salah, the um, last verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, and this one, right? That Allah's promise that He would not punish us if we were to not to worship, that we, that we were to worship Him only and not associate others uh, in uh, partnership with Him. Okay? Now, so these are these are the things in which you you must understand. And Allah Himself reminded us, for example, Surah number 16, verse number 78. Wallahu ummahatikum wal afidah tashkurun. Yeah. And Allah has brought you out from the wombs of your mothers. Well, you know nothing. And he gave you hearing, sights, and hearts that you may give thanks to Allah. And all of us are misusing these blessings, right? Eyes, yes, we use it for some things that is not in terms of worshipping Allah. We forget that we, we started from nothing. And this is how Allah allowed you and I to have a lot of abilities. Inshallah, the main function of the abilities that Allah has given us and uh, the, the, what do you call it, the, our eyes, the ears, right? Our bodily um, organs in order to worship Allah, right? As Allah said, for example, in Surah number um, 51 verse number 56 and the next few verses وَمَا insa إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ 51 to 56 right? in which means that I do not create a jinn and man can accept that they should worship me and this is our purpose of life brothers all right in case we forget and in the next in the next verse right so there was 51 56 which, which I always mentioned in my class as you know right that I do not create jinn and man can accept that they should worship me Right, fifty-seven. Ma uridu minhum mir rizqin wa ma uridu ayyutaimun. I do not seek any provision from them. Nor do I ask that they should feed me. Allah do not ask anything in return. Right? How can we replace our eyes? How can we replace our pay back our our our, our, Lord, our ears and all this? Right? The next verse. Inna Allah huwa ar-razzaqu dhul quwwatil matin. Verily Allah is the all provider, owner of power, the most strong. Now all these kind of things we, we do need to really digest it. That is why one of the best, for me personally, right, the best dhikr is always La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahul mulku wa lahul hamd. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Right? None has right to worship but him. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ None has right to worship but Allah. وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِكَ لَا He has no partners. لَهُ الْمُلْكِ He is the dominion. He controls everything. وَلَهُ الْحَمْدِ He is the all praise. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ He is able to do everything. If you were to understand these five things, inshallah, everything is um, you will know exactly what is the deen of Allah. Yeah, what is the foundation in Islam? Provided that we understand these five elements. Right? So, we, we have to really um, look at ourselves because a lot of us are rushing to do many things. We have a lot of work, I understand, a lot of responsibilities and all this, but we need to spend our time to see and to whether Allah's right has been fulfilled. 
Because without him, we are nothing. Who is going to ju be ju judging us on the Day of Judgment? Allah. Who will be, be facing on the Day of Judgment? We will be called on the Day of Judgment, brothers. You and me, everybody. Where is Fulan, bin Fulan, bin Fulan? Where is so, son of so, son of so? Right? And subhanAllah, in this place called the an najwa the secret council, in which Allah is going to reveal everything that we have done. The wrong things, of course, the sins. Haven't you done that, 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 this, 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 and all this? Everything will be revealed by Allah. Because Allah is Al-Alim. He is the all know He is Al-Khabir. He is the um, All-Aware. He is... Um, he knows everything, as Sami, Al Basir, and all in relation to the all here and all, all, all seer, right? And and all this, right? We expect Allah to know, and that's why we must be conscious sometimes, whenever we want to do something that may may displeasing with Allah. Yes, nobody can, nobody may be able to, to to notice you or to observe you, but Allah always knows. Not only that, Allah has His soldiers, right? the angels who will record on the, the, the good and bad deeds that we do, all right? So, um, this is something that we do need to uh, uh, understand, right? That Allah doesn't want or expect us to um, provide him with anything, right? Even when we pray, right, brothers, you understand, no? The prayer, even though, even though all of us are not praying to Allah, he doesn't make Allah less great. He's always great. Right? He doesn't need us. We are the one who need this. The prayer itself. Right? I know some people are struggling now with the Fajr. We make dua that Allah will continue to guide us to wake up in the morning, to pray on time in the mosque, inshallah. That that we, we are praying for our own self. To protect us, to get guidance first. Right? And to protect us from committing sins. As I said, just in Surah number 29, verse number... Uh, 45, right, from Fahisha and from Munkar, from the things that Allah would be displeased with us. And this is for us. Because why? Because not only, only this, because the first thing that is going to be asked by Allah on the Day of Judgment is our Salah. Right? So don't don't ever think that, oh, I'm doing Allah a favor, right? Uh, because I, I'm, I'm going to worship Him, right? And this is what we should do. No, of course not. When you pray, it's for yourself. Allah do not need all this, and we must understand this, right? Because everything that we do will be, inshallah, rewarded or punished in the day of judgment. Okay, so this is important that all of us understand, right? Um, lastly, right, a, a few things that we we need to have this etiquette with Allah. Firstly, fear and hope. There must be a genuine fear, right? Fear that we'll be punished if we do not obey Allah. But sometimes a lot of hope that we must have that, well, Allah is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, right? He will um, forgive us because that's what He promised us, isn't it true? Surah number 39, verse number um, 53. Say, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah, for Allah forgive all sins. Indeed, Allah is often forgiving the most merciful. Right? In fact, right? I think it was, was it, was it um, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam? Right? I think in Surah number 12, right? In verse number 87, if I'm not mistaken, right? Didn't he say, right, in the last bit, Right? إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرِينَ Kafirun, sorry. إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Certainly no one despairs of Allah's mercy except the people who disbelieve. How can we despair of Allah's mercy when we uh, we know we are supposed to understand Tawheed? And part of Tawheed is Allah's names. How can Allah lie to us when He Himself told us in the Quran, He is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, He is Al Tawab, He is Al Afu, He is many, many things, right? In terms of His forgiveness and His mercy and His repentance, is uh, is Al Alim, right? The one who is forbearing, He's waiting for you and I to come back to Him, right? So this is how we we we, we this etiquette with Allah. First of all, we must have this 
mixture or balance of hope and fear. Not we cannot be just oh don't worry, do anything that you want. All is rahman No, of course not. We must be fearful. So there must be a mixture of hope and mercy, inshallah. Yeah. The next one, right? Shukr, gratitude to Allah, right? Um, in Surah Nama Ibrahim 14, verse number 7, Allah said, La in shakartum la azidan nakum. Yeah, that if you are grateful, I will give you more. And this is it. We forget the one that gave us the money in our account is not us, it's not our employer, it's Allah's our rock. He provides for us. But Allah said, directly, if we are grateful to Allah, if we obey Him, we continue to worship Allah only, right? He will provide more. Okay. Um, Ali Imran, right? Surah Al Imran, three was my one four five. Wa ma kana li nafsin anta muta illa bi idni Allahi kitabam muajjala. Wa ma yurid thawabat dunya nuktihi minha. Wa ma yurid thawab al akhirati nuktihi minha. Allah has made the reward for gratitude free from any conditions. As in, and no person can ever die except by Allah's leave and at an appointed time. And whoever desires a reward in this world, we shall give him of it. And whosoever desires a reward in the hereafter, we shall give him thereof. And we shall reward the grateful. Okay, Allah will reward the grateful. Right, so this is something that we do need to have. That is why, um, what did Allah say? For example, it was it in Surah number fifty-two, no, was one five two, right? Right. Therefore, remember me, and I will remember you, and be grateful to me, right? And never be ungrateful to me. Right, in surah number two, I think it was number one, five, two. Okay, so very important that we, we have this ability. It didn't we say every day, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. When we receive good news, we say Alhamdulillah. When we eat something, we say Alhamdulillah. When we say Alhamdulillah, everything is about praising Allah. Right? Now, the next thing that we should have also is that we must ponder over Allah's power and control over us. We must do this. We must ponder that everything is controlled by Allah. Isn't it true? There's Allah's al al-mulk. When we recite, recite al-mulk itself every night, inshallah, and we memorize it, what happened? The reward of al-mulk is amazing. Surah 67, isn't it true, right? It can, for example, protect us from punishment of the grave, firstly. Secondly, it will cause us, inshallah, to be, uh, to have intercession until we are forgiven, subhanallah, because al-mulk will defend us. Or, it will until it causes us to enter Jannah. This is authentic hadith. So something that you and I, we do need to really um, understand Al-Mulk, not just memorize blindly, as you know, understand it because it contains every element to understand that Allah is the one who controls everything. He's the one who is the dominion, not Mother Nature, not your government, not the Queen, is Allah. Right? That's why, for example, the COVID-19 is happening today, right? It's still going on, getting worse. We need to ask Allah to, to help us. Perhaps, perhaps we have been ungrateful to Allah, right? And it's something we do need continuous, continuously to ask Allah to, to forgive us, right? And to alleviate us from this uh, pandemic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us afiyah, right? The health, um, iman, and taqwa, okay? Um, so in Surah al dhariyat 51, verse number 50, Allah said, Fafirru ilallah. Right? What does it mean? Flee or run towards Allah for His mercy. Don't run away because Shaitan is always asking to us to run away. Saying, oh, you did so many sins. Shaitan is always telling us, you did so many sins. How can Allah forgive you? Right? But when we talk about tawbah, tawbah is opposite of the normality because when, whenever we do things against each other, we always want to avoid, mm, maybe if I, I better not call him again because then, you know, he'd be angry with me. But Allah is not like that. Allah is, is that the more you repent, the more he loves us. Isn't it true? Right? Remember the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
um, through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that Allah loves a person repentance even more than a person who in the middle of a desert this person lost his camel and lost water supplies in true, right and when he so can you imagine in the middle of desert brothers you have all the supplies of food right um you wanna know without this food there's no other places uh, to eat and all this no other vegetations you die right so when he woke up the camel disappeared that means he was searching and searching because even he would die and he fell so tired he fell asleep again and then he he woke up the camel was next to him and he said oh Allah you are my slave I'm your Lord because he was so happy he forgot everything and Allah is more happier that you and I are repenting to him more than this person was happy to see the camel. And this is how we have to come back to Allah. Right? We must differentiate ourselves from Iblis who disobeyed Allah and he refused to repent. We must be like inshallah Adam alayhi salam and all the other prophets right, who made mistakes and they repent to Allah. Adam alayhi salam said the dua in surah number 7 verse number 23 Rabbana dhulamna anfusana wa illam taghfilana wa tarhamna lana kunana minal khasirin Our Lord, our Rabb We have wronged ourselves Rabbana dhulamna wa illam taghfilana If you do not forgive us and show us your mercy Truly, we will be among those who are the losers Right? You know sallallahu alayhi salam made an important dua in the belly of the will La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal dhalimin None has right to worship but you. Glorified are you. Truly I have been the wrongdoers. So all these are forms of repentance and a dua that we have been taught by Allah um, in the Quran. So we do need to understand and memorize inshallah, right? Um, at the same time, lastly, right? A Muslim must also um, consider how generous and compassionate Allah is. And this is etiquette of Allah that, to Allah that we must have. Don't just think about, oh, you know, I'm still like this, I have these problems. No, of course not. What, what better things that Allah has given us than Islam? We have been given the gift of Islam that has not been given to anybody else. SubhanAllah. This is our passport to Jannah, as I said many times. We just need the visa to enter Jannah. The visa we said, I said many times, is Allah's mercy. No visa, no entry. Right? So this is a, an opportunity, inshallah, for all of us to enter Jannah. Right? So we just need to remind each other. Of course, we are not we are human beings, we are not perfect, we do make mistakes. But this is how we um we help each other, right? To encourage each other, motivate each other in order to, to do good deeds, inshallah. Right? So it's important that we have this attitude of um, to, sh to, to understand how generous and compassionate Allah is. That Allah's mercy is divided into 100 parts. One part is in this world and 99 parts reserved for us in the hereafter, inshallah. Right? And how merciful Allah is. Remember I thought we talked just now about An-Najwa. Allah will say, yeah, have you done, have you done this? You have done all these sins, this and this. Every single sins, brothers, will be enumerated, will be detailed, and will be informed to us by Allah Himself. But, inshallah, Allah will say, but I'm going to forgive all your sins. Because when Allah first was detailing all the sins that we did in this life, this hadith, right, the person will say, oh my God, right? That's it. No chance. Hellfire. And subhanAllah, you and I know, right? Compared to the previous nations, for example. In previous nations, when they disobeyed Allah and they disobeyed the Prophet, that's it. Finish. Punishment. Only one nation was saved by Allah. Nation of you, you know Salah Islam, isn't it true? The rest were punished. Alhamdulillah, we are different. As Allah is called Al-Alim, right? He's the one who will be forbearing. He's waiting for you and I to come back to Him. So don't ruin this chance and come back to Allah immediately. Do not need to wait for the next Ramadan or next Friday immediately, inshallah. Okay? So always have this ability to um, understand how generous and compassionate Allah is. This, is. this is our etiquette at least we must have to Allah. Right? Um, sorry, lastly, right? Um, 
having no 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 sorry, there's two more points having good expectations of Allah right so it is not proper for any one of us to have any bad thoughts of Allah yes we may have problems or, but sometimes the problem that we have is our own fault our own sins isn't it true right but whatever happens to us we need to have always a good expectations that Allah is going to help us and we were going to be elevated of our difficulties. That's what Allah said in the hadith, uh, in the hadith from uh, Bukhari. Uh, Allah said, I am as my servant's opinion of me. If we have a good opinion of Allah, we will get everything good. If we don't ha have a good opinion of Allah, that's it. Everything is not good. Okay. Now lastly, we call it ihtisab. What is ihtisab? Ihtisab is that you look looking forward to Allah's reward and forgiveness for every affliction. Right, regardless of the pain and suffering, and this is called ihtisab. Right, always remember, brothers, we discussed many times. Right, um, I'll end soon, inshallah. I know you're waiting to watch your football. Um, we are full of sins, all of us, and none anybody with a single atom of impurity or sins cannot enter Jannah. So, we need it, it must be purified. Either first in this world, if still not purified yet, that means still sins left. I'm afraid that some of us have to be purified in the barzakh. If still not purified yet, some people have to be purified in the hellfire first. All right. So, any afflictions that are affecting many of us in this life. It is a form, inshallah, if you are patient, of course, there's a very important criteria, patient, inshallah, it will be able to um, expiate our sins, remove our sins, inshallah. If a person has cancer, for example, if a person's family member passed away, um, if you are in financial difficulties and all this, everything is from Allah and we just need to face it. Of course, we need to ask Allah to help us. At the same time, we need to be patient, inshallah. No need to have all these bad opinions of Allah. Or some people will say, why Allah always give money to that person? He's not even praying. Right? I heard people saying that. He's not even uh, doing this. Why did, why did Allah give money to those non-believers? Well, this is up to Allah and them. Don't think about it. Right? Ours is a different. Right? The fact that we are being tested by Allah itself, subhanAllah. Right? It is, inshallah, a way to remove our sins. We discussed before, patients can be in different levels. Some people want to for example, one level of patience is that but, uh, or when a person is tested, a, a person's reactions can be four things or three or four things, right? One of them is like they completely be go, go the other way and completely um, become uh, uh, ungrateful and more, uh, more dis disbeliever. Second one, person become patient. Third one, right? Perhaps a person, a better one is of course a person who will say, Alhamdulillah. And this is something that we do need to to really understand a concept of um, ihtisab, that we are grateful that Allah is testing us because didn't, uh, wouldn't Allah test only the believers and the stronger believer you are, Allah will test you more, right? So all these kind of things that we do need to have this um, ability, right? To be patient, right? And if, remember Allah did say, in Allah Ma'a Sabirin. Surah number two was one five three. Allah is always with a patient. Right? So today we, we covered not just about the um rights of Allah, which we discussed just now, rights of Allah against uh, on the servants, is that he we must worship him only alone, and we must not have any partners associated along with him. Um this is his rights we discussed. At the same time, alhamdulillah, we also discussed about what must be our etiquette to Allah. To be grateful, to have ihtisab, to be able to have all these good opinions about him, understanding about his compassion and about have all these good things about him in order for all of us, inshallah, to be able to, to face him with, a, with an open and happy heart. Yeah, I hope today's talk is able to um, inform us all right, about Allah's rights. It's not just about me, 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 I want this, I want that, I want this. And then you don't even pray on time. You don't even um, understand about the topic of shirk, right, and tawheed, right? Um, 
So this hopefully it will allow all of us to understand Allah's rights and make the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to guide all of us in our straight path. Make the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to uh, increase our iman and taqwa. May the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our deeds in the month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us and family members Jannatul Faridawas. Jazakum Allah khair, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shudu ala ila anta, wa astaghfuka wa tubi lai, subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzata ma yasifun, wa salamu ala al-mursalin, wa alhamdulillahi wa alamin, assalamualaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair, inshallah, we'll see you for our next talk. Good to see you, sisters. Assalamualaikum, take care. Bye. Assalamualaikum.